Good evening. <clears throat> Can you hear me? Hello, good evening, teacher. Hi. Hello, Byron. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay. okay. Yes. Yes, sir. Hear you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Let's begin. Para ver los juegos de la NBA. Okay. Um, attendance. That's the first thing. Always the first thing. All right. I'm a bit too close to the screen. That's better. <clears throat> All right. When you hear your name, please let me know. Let's begin. Abdi Avisua Peña Lopez. Abdi Avisua Peña Lopez. Alejandro José Quintanilla Ayala. Alejandro José Quintanilla Ayala. Ana Filomena Mendoza. Good evening, teacher present. Good evening. Ana Yanira Mendoza Godoy. Ana Yanira Mendoza Godoy. Andrea Michelle García Selva. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Byron Rafael Avelar Aquino. Present. Welcome. Thanks. Boris Martín Salinas Quintanilla. Here. Good evening. Good evening. Cecilia Elizabeth Guardado Gutierrez. Cecilia Elizabeth Guardado Gutierrez. César Alexander Ramírez Ramírez. César Alexander Ramírez Ramírez. Claudia Yanet Iraeta Martínez. Claudia Yanet Iraeta Martínez. Debbie Natalia Segura Ramos. Debbie Natalia Segura Ramos. Daisy Carolina Rodríguez Mejía. I'm here already, teacher. Welcome. Debbie. Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. Present. Welcome. Gabriela Stephanie Cortez de Martínez. Gabriela Stephanie Cortez de Martínez. Gladys Imelda Sánchez. I'm here, teacher. Welcome. Jenny Elizabeth Santillana Cortez. Good evening, present. Good evening. José Eraibín Enríquez. Here, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Carla Stephanie Perla Umansor. Carla Stephanie Perla Umansor. Luis Fernando Enrique Herrera. Good evening, teacher. Welcome, Luis. Madeline Diana Cerón de Paz. Good evening, present. Welcome. Maritza Isabel Méndez Aguirre. Maritza Isabel Méndez Aguirre. Melanie Andrea Trinidad Villanueva. Good evening, present. Good evening. Noemí Alicia Estrada de Valle. Noemí Alicia Estrada de Valle. Reina Isabel Romero Ventura. Reina Isabel yeah. Romero Ventura. Hello. 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 Rosa Esmeralda. Noemi. Noemi. Okay. Thank you. Me sacó. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Rosa Esmeralda Hernández de Flores. Present teacher. Welcome. Rufino Amilcar Hernández Linares. 
Rufino Amilcar Hernández Linares. Sandra Present, Cecilia. Teacher. Hello, Rufino. Sandra Cecilia Munguía. Present. Okay, welcome. I have two chat entries. Alejandro is present. Okay. Thank you. Good evening, teacher. I'm sorry. It's okay. Thank you. Cecilia is also here. Okay. Thank you, Cecilia. Hello. Me too, Janira. I'm sorry, Janira. Okay. Thank you, Janira. Good evening. Good evening. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Let's continue. Everybody, welcome. This is Advanced English 3, and that's me, Ivan Doñan, at your service. Once again, this is session number 6, and today is November the 7th of 2023. So what are we going to do? Basically, we need to continue with the topic we started yesterday, which is relative clauses and noun clauses. Okay, so before uh, we start doing the rest of the exercises, let's have a short review of this. So what is that? I mean, we studied this yesterday, but we're going to just cover it very quickly right now. A relative clause, you have relative clauses and noun clauses. A relative clause can occur in the subject or the object part of a sentence, okay? If it happens before the verb, that's the subject part. So you can have a relative clause in the subject part of the sentence. If it happens after the verb, uh, you can have a relative clause in, the, in the, the complement of the sentence, and that will be the object part of the sentence. Like this, you have something that bugs me, okay? And then you have the verb be, is. So anything that comes before the verb be is the subject, all right? So when you say something that bugs me, all that is the subject, and that bugs me is the relative clause. So something that bugs me is people who take up two seats on a crowded bus. So... You have this, people who take up two seats on a crowded bus is the object. And then who take up two seats on a crowded bus is the relative clause, okay? So as you can see, the relative clause can occur in the subject part of the sentence or the object part of the sentence. Now, the thing that I can't stand is coworkers who or that leave their cell phones ringing on their desks. Some sentences use a relative clause and a noun clause beginning with a question word such as when, okay? When it begins with a question word, like when, okay, then you don't have a relative clause, you have something that we call a noun clause. Example, the thing that I hate, that I hate is a relative clause, is when kids ride their scooters on the sidewalk. The clause when kids ride their scooters on the sidewalk is a noun clause. It begins with when. Another example. One thing that bothers me, that bothers me is the relative clause, is, and then you have the noun clause, when my friends don't show up on time for things. That's the explanation. Now, same thing we studied yesterday, nothing new at this point, but it's good to review this because now you have uh, knowledge check 2.2. Okay, instructions, read the following problems, decide which clauses are relative and which which are noun clauses. So what about number one, when kids ride their scooters on the sidewalk, what kind of clause is that? Is that a noun clause or a relative clause? If you know the answer, please raise your hand. Let's uh, hear your participation. What do we have? This is in the platform, by the way. This is part of the exercises we have to complete. Boris Salinas. It's a noun clause. It's a noun clause. Yeah, that is correct. Thank you. What about number two? You have that I hate. Okay, what is that? Is that a noun clause or a relative clause? If you know the answer, please raise your hand. Jenny Elizabeth Santiana. It's relative clause. It's a relative clause. Okay, that's right. Okay, very good. Thank you. Uh, number three, who leave their cell phones ringing on their desk. What kind of clause is that? Is that a noun clause or a relative clause? If you know the answer, please raise your hand. What kind of clause is that? Need to open the window a little bit. It's kind of hot. Okay, what kind of clause is that? Cesar? The three is a relative clauses. Relative clause. That is correct. Thank you. Okay, Present very good. Teacher, no, no, no <laughs> Hi, you didn't hear your name. <laughs> All right, Cesar. Oops. I minimized it. Cesar. Okay. Right there. Thank you very much. Uh, number four, you have that box me. What's that? Is that a noun clause or a relative clause? 
what do we have? If you want to participate, you may raise your hand. How about this one? Don't be shy now. Okay, Cesar. Cesar? Is is relative clause. It's a relative clause. Okay. Yeah, it is a relative clause. That is correct. Thank you. Okay. What about number five? When my friends don't show up on time for things. Who has this one? Please raise your hand. When my friends don't show up on time for things. Come on, people. Don't be shy. Okay. Sandra Cecilia. Noun clause. That will be a noun clause. That is correct. Thank you. Okay. Number six. That bothers me. How about that one? That bothers me. Gladys and then Byron. Okay, Gladys, number six. Byron, number seven is yours. Relative clause. It's a relative clause. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Byron, that I can't stand. Is that a noun clause or relative clause? What do you think? Relative clause. Relative clause. That's correct. Thank you. And the last one, who take up two seats on a crowded bus. What kind of clause is that? If you know the answer, please raise your hand. Who can tell me? Or who can tell the whole group? Last one? No volunteers? Jenny Elizabeth? I think it's noun clause. Noun clause. Well, normally noun clauses begin with when. Yes. Uh -huh. Oh, so relative clause. That will be a relative clause. Okay, yeah, that's correct. Thank you. Okay, so th those are the answers, or that's, yeah, that's the way you solve this exercise. That's Knowledge Check 2.2. In case you haven't done it, well, you have it right there on the screen. Let's continue, because there's a lot of material we need to cover. Now, this is extra. This is not in the, um, well, I'm going to take a screenshot. Okay, this is not in the manual, so I'm going to send it to you. Okay, it's right there. Okay, so if you check uh, the WhatsApp group, you'll find that information. All right, now what is next? Take a look, relative clauses and noun clauses. In some relative clauses, okay, and this is very important, in some relative clauses, the relative pronoun, and the relative pronoun is who, that, or which, can be omitted, okay? That's the thing. In some relative clauses, the relative pronoun, who, that, or which, can be omitted. In an object relative clause, a relative pronoun, who, that, or which, is optional. Relative pronouns are only required when they function as the subject of the relative clause. Now, that sounds very complicated, right? I have that, that's like the technical explanation, but I have a much, much easier explanation. Okay. And it works like this. I'm going to open a text file. So you have this I told a friend a secret. He told the secret to all our classmates. If you want to join the two sentences by using a relative clause, then you have this I told a friend a secret. I'm going to zoom in. I told a friend a secret that he told to our classmates. Okay, you have that. Now, in this case, the relative pronoun that is optional. You can use it or you can leave it out. You can say, I told a friend a secret he told to all our classmates. Or you can say that he told to our classmates. But when do we know we need a relative pronoun? And when can we omit it? It's very easy. Now, you have the technical explanation here. In an object relative clause, a relative pronoun, who, that, or which is optional. You can use it or you can leave it out. It's up to you. Relative pronouns are only required when they function as the subject of a relative clause. In other words, if you want the easy explanation, you will need the relative pronoun if it is followed by a verb or an adverb and a verb, okay? Like in this case, I have a roommate. She never cleans the kitchen. I have a roommate who never cleans the kitchen, okay? What about this one? We're going to compare the two sentences right here. I'm going to type them in. 
I told, sorry, I told a friend a secret that uh, he told, wow, he told to all our, our classmates. Okay. I know what's going on with me tonight, but I can't type in correctly. So I told a friend a secret that he told to all our classmates. Now, you have a relative pronoun, that. How do you know if you need it or if it is optional? Easy. This is the key. If after a relative pronoun, you have a subject, then the relative pronoun is optional. Okay? Just look at the relative clause that he told to all our classmates. So the relative pronoun is that. After that, you have the subject he. If you have the relative pronoun and immediately after you have a subject, then the relative pronoun becomes optional. You can say, I told a friend a secret, he told to all our classmates. Just like that. But what happens in the second case? I have a roommate who never cleans the kitchen. Who never cleans the kitchen is the relative clause. Who is the relative pronoun? Now I have a question. Is the relative pronoun followed by a subject or not? I see some faces shaking, shaking, you know, like this. I don't think so, teacher. You don't think so. You are right because it's, it's not followed by a, by a subject. There is no subject right there. If there is no subject, that means that the relative pronoun is the subject. If that's the case, you need it. You have to use it. That's the easy explanation. Okay. Look, relative pronoun and immediately after you have a subject, it's optional. If you want to use it, use it. If you don't want to use it, don't use it. But if you have a relative pronoun and after that you don't have a subject, but you have a verb, in this case you have an, an adverb frequency, but then you have a verb. If that's the case, then the relative pronoun is absolutely necessary. You need to use it. That's the explanation. Now take a look at this. In a subject relative clause, a relative pronoun, who, that, or which is necessary because it functions as the subject of the relative clause. It's the same thing that I just told you, okay? I have a roommate who never cleans the kitchen. Now, um... Okay. Teacher, excuse me. Yes, uh, Could you put the, the last uh, that you write in? This? Yes, yes. Thank okay. You. You're welcome. Teacher. Yes. Este, for me, is a little difficult, mm -hmm. but I don't understand when, but in the explanation, say the relative pronoun, who, that, or which can be omitted. But, and the first one the first one sentence um, my 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 doubt is that if all the sentence have two parts with relative clauses and noun clauses no not necessarily but, no they um, don't they don't necessarily have i mean if i understand your question correctly are are you asking if you need a noun clause and a relative clause in the sentence necessarily? Yes. yes. Uh -huh. No, no, not really. For example, in these cases, you only have those. You only have relative clauses. I ask you, why mm. is it important to identify if it's a relative clause or noun clause? Why? Well, it is. it, it becomes a, a grammar thing, a grammar issue mm. in the end. I mean, uh, in the book, basically, they, they're just, or in the manual, in this case, they are identifying the two types of clauses by their names, grammatically speaking. But 
in the great scheme of things, it is not absolutely necessary for people to know exactly when you have a relative clause and when you have a noun clause. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. It's it's a more like a technical matter. Ah, okay. Uh -huh. It's a grammatical sense. It's, mm -hmm. it's it's a grammatical. It's a grammar thing, basically. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the end, the teacher, and mm -hmm. then the explanation is that uh, um, when you when we omitted um, the subject the relative for clause, who? the relative no, no, for, i'm sorry the relative pronoun uh-huh uh -huh. yes uh -huh. um i am re referred to to my roommate in the second one yes you're referring to the roommate mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the first one in we can omit it he right no, you have to use he. What you can omit is the relative pronoun, ah, that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I told a friend a secret. He told uh, with a comma, teacher, no, or not? No, no comma. I told a friend a secret. Let's, let's take a look at some more examples. OK, if I say um, that's the girl that I like. Imagine I have the sentence. That's that's the girl that I like. So, uh, what is the relative clause in this sentence? What will be the complete relative clause? The whole clause. That. that is the relative pronoun. I mean, yeah, the relative clause begins with the relative pronoun that, but what is the complete relative clause? That will be that I like. That is a relative clause. Now, a uh, question, is it possible to omit the relative pronoun or do we need to use it? That's the girl. Um, Let's see it, what, uh, uh, okay. so, sorry, do you need it? Yes, do you need it? Uh, in the first one, you said that we can omit or omit it. Mm -hmm. um, he, right? No, no, we cannot omit he. We can omit the relative pronoun that, no. but mm -hmm. not the subject he. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. You need to okay. use the subject. We're okay. talking about relative pronouns. The, the relative pronouns are who, that, and which sometimes you can omit them mm -hmm. but let's see what jose mm -hmm. has to say you have that's the girl that i like so the relative uh, clauses that i like is it possible Teacher, to omit? according mm -hmm. according to what you said before yes we can omit it because the relative pronoun is, pronoun is followed by a subject correct by a, a proper uh, no, no, uh, a pronoun. <laughs> pronoun. That, a subject uh, pronoun. A, pronoun. <laughs> a subject pronoun. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that is correct. So, yeah, in this case, we can omit it and we can say, that's the girl I like. Simple as that. But what happens if I say, that's the girl that lives next door? That's the girl that lives next door. Mm. What about this one? You have the relative the relative clause that lives next door. Is it possible to omit the relative pronoun that? Yes. In this it case, not teacher. Is it possible to say oh, yeah. then that's the girl lives next door? Would that be mm -hmm. possible? Let's see what okay. Uh, Jose says no. Let's see what Miss Romero no, has to say. That okay. is the is no. the pra, is the pronoun of this of the sentence of is, the relative clause. Is the subject of the relative clause. It's the subject. Uh huh. Uh huh. We don't have another. We don't have another subject after that. In fact, after that, you have a verb. Okay, which means the relative pronoun is absolutely necessary. So that's the rule. If the relative uh, okay. pronoun is followed by a subject, then it's it's optional, but if the relative pronoun is is followed by a verb, then you have to use it. Yes, Miss Romero. 
um uh, I have a this question like this stuff. If I if I could change like the verb live with ing, for example, saying that's the girl living next door. Yeah, it is correct. It is correct. That is a reduced relative clause. Mm -hmm. Okay. You Thank can say you. that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's the girl living next door. You you can say that. Again, it's a, it's what they call a reduced relative clause. Totally. I believe we studied that last level <laughs> or something, I guess. Yeah. Yes, I teacher, we, so. saw, <laughs> uh -huh. we saw it the last level. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, totally. Okay, good, good. I, I'm, I'm happy to see that you remember the contents. That's excellent. Okay, so uh, that's the explanation. Now, uh, there is an exercise, okay? Check the sentences where the relative pronoun who, that, or which is optional. Teacher, okay. I have a question. Sure, what's your question? Well, last <laughs> modules we have seen, we have studied a dependent or independent relative clauses in mm -hmm. e are those topics related uh, with the with the with the topic we are studying right now or yes. different the thing topics? the thing is uh yeah they're relative clauses. Okay, and we're studying relative clauses right now. Um, the thing about that is that depending on independent relative clauses are, are a little bit different because, uh, well, it's not depending on independent. They're defining and non-defining, okay? Uh, the thing about defining and non-defining relative clauses is just that defining relative clauses are necessary for you to understand the whole sentence. I mean, the whole idea. It's They're necessary for you to know who or what people are talking about. Uh, Non-defining relative clauses, on the other hand, are they just give uh, extra information and they are not necessary for you to know or understand what the person is talking about. Like this, when you say, um, let's see, again, I'm going to use the same example. That's the girl that I like, okay? So you have this that I like. This relative clause is absolutely necessary. If you omit it, and then you have, you just say, that's the girl. People will ask you, what girl? I mean, what's special about her? Who, who, who are you really talking about? But then I say, that's the girl that I like. Ah, that girl. Okay. Now, the relative clause gives you specific information for you to understand what you're talking about, in this case, this particular girl. That will be a defining relative clause. Okay. Um, in this case, teacher, it's a defining relative clause that is also a... Uh, uh, I, I forgot it. No, uh, the prana... Uh, I forgot what... <laughs> <laughs> what what's yeah, about it's a, to say to it's a it's a defining relative clause in which you can omit the relative front now. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty much what it is. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I get it. So um imagine that I say uh for example, um I don't know, let's just give me a name. You say Roxanne, okay. Uh who has two brothers, okay, is my best friend, okay? Now I say Roxanne, comma, who has two brothers, comma, is my best friend. Now, this is a relative clause, who has two brothers. But in this but it's case, non-defining. It's non-defining because it's giving us only extra information about Roxanne. If I omit it, I say, Roxanne is my best friend. People will understand. Ah, okay, good. Good for you, Roxanne is your best friend. So this is basically just giving you extra information about Roxanne. All right, uh, but how is this connected to the topic we're studying today? Well, it's just that they are relative clauses that I like and who has two brothers, they're both relative clauses. This is just a different aspect of it, but yeah. It's pretty much the same topic. But right now, uh, we need to focus on the use of who, that, or which 
uh, when they're optional, okay? So what about number one? You have this. One thing that makes me sick is really selfish people. So how about this sentence? Is it possible to omit the relative clause? I mean, the relative pronoun? Is it possible to leave it out? Is it optional? Jose Raibin. I think it's not optional, it's necessary. It is necessary, absolutely. That is correct, okay? You have to say the thing that makes me sick is really selfish people. If you say the thing makes me sick is really selfish people, that doesn't make sense. That is correct, thank you. What about number two? People who chew gum loudly really get on my nerves, okay? How about this one? Volunteers. Is it possible to omit the relative pronoun? Ms. Romero, then Jose? It is not. It's not possible. It's needed. Okay, yeah. it's necessary. Yeah, you have to say people who chew gum loudly. Okay, uh, Jose, number three, the restaurant that we had dinner at last night overcharged us. In this case, we can omit it, teacher. You can omit it. Absolutely. Wait. Absolutely. Yeah, you can omit it, okay, because after the relative pronoun that, we have a subject, we. So, it becomes optional. You can say, the restaurant we had dinner at last night overcharged us. Thank you very much. Rufino, number four. Someone's cell phone kept ringing all through the movie that I saw last night. Uh, it's optional. It's optional. That is correct, okay? Because after the relative pronoun that, you have a subject, I, so it's optional. Very good. Thank you. Number five, I had a big argument with a store clerk who refused to give me a refund. How about this one? If you know the answer, please raise your hand. Jenny and then Byron. Jenny, you get number five and Byron number six. Hi. Hi, I think is necessary. It is necessary. That is correct. Okay. It is necessary because after who you have a verb, not a subject. So you need to use it. Thank you, Jenny. That is correct. Number six, Byron. My teacher gets mad every time. At, at, sorry, I misread it. My teacher gets mad at every little noise that our class makes. It's not necessary. So it's optional, right? Yeah. That is correct. Okay. When you say our class, that's the subject. Okay. It comes immediately after the relative pronoun that. Very good. Very good. Number seven. Who wants to participate? The town fined, uh, multo, as a, that's the meaning of fine. Le puso una multa. The town fined a neighbor who burned garbage in their backyard. <laughs> okay. We were talking about this yesterday. Boris. It's necessary, teacher. It is necessary. That is correct. Okay. Yeah. After the relative pronoun who, you have a verb. So you need to use it. Thank you. And number eight, the people in the line which the people in the line which he tried to cut into complain to the theater manager. When you cut into a line means that you don't respect the line. I mean, there are people waiting in the line and then you just place yourself at you know, first, okay, you're cutting in line. That's not nice. Okay, so Jenny, number eight. Number eight is optional. It's optional. That is correct. The people in line, he tried to cut into, complain to the theater manager. Okay, great. Excellent. I like that. You can see that the topic is clear. Now, there's another exercise right here, but I'm not, okay. You know what? Teacher. Yes. In this case, are happening the two things are relative classes and are defining relative classes, right? Yes, none of because them is... the mm -hmm. formation is necessary. Absolutely. Also, none of none of them is separated from the main clause by commas. Therefore, they are mm -hmm. defining. Uh huh. That's another thing, right? Defining relative clauses are never separated by commas from uh, from the main clause. But non-defining relative clauses are always separated from the main clause by commas. At least one okay. comma. Mm -hmm. That's Thank right. You, yeah. teacher. All of them are defining. That's right. Okay. 
let's see there's a lot to cover so there's one exercise right here that i think we're going to omit for the sake of time so um lesson objective three point sorry 2.3 uh, in this section, participants will be able to use phrases to talk about annoyance. This vocabulary we're going to study here. Take a look. That drives me up the wall. Okay, so what's the meaning of that? That drives me up the wall is an expression that you use, okay, when something makes you angry. And basically, that's all we're going to study today. Combine the verbs with the phrases. How many combinations can you make? How are their meanings different? Okay, so you have three verbs. The verbs are drive, get, and make. And the phrases are on someone's nerves, someone crazy, someone down, someone mad, someone sick, someone up the wall, someone's blood boil, someone's goat, and under someone's skin. So I'm going to give you four minutes, okay, for you to classify them in the three categories. Sometimes you have to use drive, sometimes you have to use get, sometimes you have to use uh, make. For example, you have on someone's nerves. I'm going to give you the first one. Uh, sorry, uh, Jenny and Alejandro. Jenny first. Hey, teacher, I don't understand the, the meaning of, of drive in this context. Ah, yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but I will explain it. To drive is to make a person uh, a specific way. Mm -hmm. It's similar to make. However, these are collocations. That means that they are not necessarily interchangeable. Sometimes you need drive, sometimes you need make. And the only way to know is by memorizing the expressions. There isn't a specific rule. Okay. But yeah, um, Alejandro wanted to say something too. Is it the same question? Yes, you should. Thank oh, you. Oh, okay. All right. So um, let's let's check the first one. You have on someone's nerves. Okay. So the first one is get. Get on someone's nerves. What is the meaning of that? When you get on someone's nerves, you irritate the person a lot. Okay. You say, for example, can you stop making noise? It's getting on my nerves. Okay. Like, uh, you know, when, when people sometimes make noises with, with, with pens, you know, when pens... Those mechanical pens, they go like chick, 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 chick. that can be a little bit annoying. Okay. Kids do that a lot. And you you tell your a kid, hey, can you please stop making that noise? It's getting on my nerves. Okay. So it's 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 annoying me. It's irritating me greatly. So that's the thing. I'm going to give you four minutes for you to classify the expressions. Sometimes they can go in more than one category. Sometimes. Okay. So please classify the, the expressions. And after that, we're going to check answers. And after checking answers, we're going to see the meaning of each and every one of them. Okay, so that everything is clear. All right, so four minutes starting right now. Let's do it.
All right, time is up. So you have uh, get on someone's nerves. That's the first one. What about someone crazy? Who knows? Jose Raibin and then Rufino. Drive. Drive crazy. Drive someone crazy. That's correct. You can drive someone crazy or make someone crazy. That's also possible. Okay, drive someone crazy, make someone crazy. Okay, good. Uh, Rufino, what about someone down? Some, someone down. Mm -hmm. Someone down. I don't see. <laughs> so, someone down. Uh, uh, get get, get someone, someone down. down. That is correct. You get someone down. Very good. Alejandro, uh, someone mad. What about this one? I don't know, teacher, exactly this, I don't know. But I <laughs> I have a question. Could, sure. could we use drive with, with someone down? Drive someone down? I don't think yes. so. I've never heard it. Okay. Uh-huh. It's good. Okay, uh -huh. and someone mad is like a, like a, the expression mad about you, right? Uh, what expression? Mad, mad about you. I'm mad about you. Yeah. I, Do you remember I, the name of the TV show? What about you? No. Really what TV stuff? show? No, I, I don't know the TV show. I'm okay. not familiar with it. I'm sorry. <laughs> what about you? Oh, uh, so. You, you have seen a lot of TV shows. Yesterday, you Excuse talked me? about Dr. House. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. ah, no, no, but, 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 I, <laughs> but imagine that, um, I don't know how can I say, la contradicción about that, because I don't, I don't watch TV. Oh, ah, okay. Since 2005. <laughs> well, yeah. it's been 18 years without watching TV. Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> oh, All right. Oh, so, someone mad, maybe mm -hmm. could be make someone mad? That is correct. You can make someone mad, get someone mad, or drive someone mad. Okay. Actually, okay. all of them are possible. But make someone mad is probably the most common of all. So, yeah, make correct someone. answer. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. What about someone sick? How about someone teacher. sick? Who said teacher? Um, Romero. <laughs> okay, Miss Romero. Thank you. Okay. I and just have a question and then I could ask it. Okay. Drive someone mad, get someone mad, and make someone mad is the same. In them, they all have the same meaning. Basically, yeah. Mm -hmm. To make someone angry. Mm -hmm. Okay. But the most um, common of the three will be make someone mad. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the next one for me is get someone sick and make someone sick. It's only one, actually. You need to choose. Um, okay. Um, make someone sick? That is correct. Okay. You make a person <laughs> sick. We will explain the meaning later on. But yeah, thank you. Maritza, someone up the wall. That one is easy. Uh, drive. Drive, yeah. The drive someone up the drive wall. Drive someone up the wall. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Uh, what about someone's blood boil? Someone's blood boil. What do we have here? Make. Who said that? Was it Cecilia? Yeah, it was Cecilia, yes. right? Okay. Make someone's blood boil. Make someone's blood boil. That is right. Okay, good. Good, good. Thank you. What about someone's goat? Byron. It make someone's goat? Actually, no. <laughs> Sorry. It's not get. make some. It's more get. like uh, get, get someone's goat. Yeah, that's right. Get someone's goat. And the last one, thank you, Byron, and, and somebody else who participated. I don't know who it was. Um, the last one, under someone's skin. How about this one? If you know the answer, raise your hands, please. Make. Oh, sorry. Who's that? Uh, Cecilia. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Make under someone's skin. Mm, no, sorry. It's not the verb make. Rufino? Get. Get it's someone. Get under someone's skin. skin. That's correct. Okay. Those are the expressions. I'm going to send them to you. 
via WhatsApp so you can have them. Okay, somewhere in here. Teacher. Yes. Excuse me, can you help me with the meaning of uh, get someone's goat? <laughs> That's exactly what we're going to because do right now. Goat is like cabra and I don't understand. Well, think about it as an equivalent to an expression we also use in Spanish when you're angry and you use the word cabra. <laughs> Okay, but don't say it because it's a bad word. But yeah, it's ah, something now like I that. understand. Uh -huh, now you get it. Okay, so yeah, it's 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 related to that. So well, we're gonna check the meaning of each and every one of those expressions because it's not just about learning the expressions, but also you have to know what they mean. And most of them basically mean the same. Okay, Alejandro. It's not about messy, teacher. <laughs> it's not about what? Messy. <laughs> messy, why? Yeah, the expression goat is not about messy. It's not about messy. Yeah. Uh, um, I, people I, call messy the goat. Uh, ah, yeah. really? Oh, okay. Yeah. Th like, thanks for it's thanks really for. Crack. Uh -huh, okay, so uh, thanks for um, uh, for the explanation. I, I never watch soccer, so I don't know. Okay, it's not about messy. Okay. All right, then. So um, take a look at this. Get on someone's nerves. We're going to go over the meaning of each of them, you know, one by one. Get on someone's nerves means to irritate or annoy someone. Example, please stop making that noise. It really gets on my nerves. Okay. So that's the first one. It really gets on my nerves. So uh, you will discover that most of them have the same meaning. Okay. Now, drive or make someone crazy is to get someone to make someone upset or annoyed which is the same as to get on someone's nerves example you say we love our two-year-old okay sorry we love our two-year-old but sometimes he drives us crazy okay and hey, now kids they're adorable but sometimes they can drive you crazy get someone down now this one is a little bit different to depress or demoralize someone, okay? It has nothing to do with, uh, you know, irritating or annoying anyone. It's about depressing or demoralize someone, okay? Rainy days always get me down, okay? Make me sad. Mm -hmm. Cloudy days too. Cloudy days, okay, they make me sad. They make me sad, they get me down. Jose. Teacher, why in the sentence we love our, our two-year-old, why the subject the subject is not the, the pronoun is not in the first part. What pronoun? Uh, she. But uh, for example, we ah. love our two-year-old girl, a uh, daughter. Uh -huh. But why is in the second part? Because in the First part, I don't know if it's a girl or a boy. Uh, I I can see that it's a girl mm -hmm. because of the second part of the sentence. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess. But this, I don't know why. I guess. I guess. I mean, you can always say we love our two-year-old daughter. I mean, it's possible. But if you're going to say she in the second part of the sentence, uh, the word daughter becomes unnecessary. Maybe if you, uh, if if the other person didn't know, or if this is the first time you talk about your 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 daughter, your little daughter, okay, then maybe you can say we love our two year old daughter. I mean, the ex the the question is actually pretty logical, okay, it makes sense. Um, you can say that, but in this case, because you say she in the second part of the sentence, using the word daughter at the beginning becomes unnecessary. But yeah, you can totally say daughter. And I think too, uh, Tisha, that is how a native speaker would say it. It sounds more natural. It sounds more natural, actually. Yeah. Yeah, we love our two-year-old. When you say your two-year-old what? No, child. Okay. But sometimes she drives us crazy. Mm -hmm. All Thank right. Thank you. You're welcome. Next one is drive, get, and make someone mad. What is the meaning of that? To cause one to become angry towards someone or something. In other words, the same meaning, okay, to irritate someone. He leaves dirty clothes all over the floor and it's driving me mad, okay? It's making me very angry. 
What's the meaning of that? Now the next one, make someone sick. What is the meaning of that? To cause someone to feel intense annoyance or disgust. This one is slightly different, okay? Because this is about feeling, uh, what's the word for this? Even in Spanish, I forgot the word. It's, um, uh, no, forget it. I, I was thinking of a word and I can't even remember in Spanish. But the thing is, this is to cause someone or to cause someone to feel intense annoyance or disgust. Okay. Example, you're so hypocritical, you make me sick. Okay. I guess the, the Spanish equivalent to this will be like, Eres tan hipócrita que me das asco, Liz. Okay, so you make me sick. So yeah, this this expresses the, the annoyance of a person and the person is indignant. Okay, that's the word. Okay, this person is is disgusted, indignant about a situation. It's like, ah, okay. That's you the sure? Yes. And be sick of something can mean the same, like I'm sick of this. Yes, you can say, Although when you say I'm sick of something that also can be interpreted as I'm tired. Okay. Oh, yeah. Or I'm fed yeah. up. Uh huh. When you say, I'm sick of this. Okay. I, I don't want, but yeah, you, you can also interpret it as something that disgusts you. Okay. It's a little bit more open to interpretation, but yeah, totally. We have a chat entry sure, here. But in this case, it's like, it's also like me enferma. Me enferma. Uh huh. Yeah. Kind of like that, but in in figuratively speaking, right? That say that something is it, yeah. Because ah. in Spanish, it's very common to say that uh, mm -hmm. tu actitud me enferma. Me enferma, me da, me da asco. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. yeah, something like that. Exactly, figuratively. Yeah, because nobody really gets sick. <laughs> it's, a, it's it's only figurative, but yeah. That's correct. The next one is drive someone up the wall. We have a chat entry. In the chat entry, we have the offensive smell of garbage made her sick. Okay. Okay. Although in this case, I guess it could be a little bit more literal. Okay. Uh, probably she felt like vomiting. Like, Ugh. okay. This is not so uh, figurative. It's actually a little bit more literal. But yeah, the idea is pretty much the same. Um, the next one is drive someone up the wall. Again, same meaning, okay? It is to make someone very irritated or angry. Just like get them someone's nerves, make someone crazy, drive someone mad, etc. Example, he is so uncooperative. He's beginning to drive me up the wall, okay? That attitude of his, right? is beginning to irritate me, to make me angry. It's driving me up the wall. The next one is make someone's blood boil. Now, this has the same meaning, but taken to the next level. To make someone extremely angry. Now, this is not just irritated. This is very angry. The way they took advantage of those people makes my blood boil. So, la forma en que se aprovecharon de esas personas hace que me hierva la sangre. So, the way they took advantage of those people makes my blood boil. Again, this is... You know, when a situation or someone makes you very, but very, very angry, it makes your blood boil. What about get someone's goat? To annoy someone very much. Again, same meaning as most of them. The way she's always correcting other people really gets my goat. Okay. <laughs> the kind of person that says like, actually, that is incorrect. No, 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 no. That is not correct. Okay. So yeah, that happens. I do it all the time because that's my job. I'm a teacher. But outside of the classes, I try not to do this because I know it can be annoying. <clears throat> and the last one. <clears throat> I'm still a bit sick. Get under someone's skin means to annoy or irritate someone intensely. His immaturity is beginning to get under my skin. Okay. And that's pretty much the meaning of each and every one of those expressions. I'm going to be sharing this with you via WhatsApp vocabulary. What's up? What's up? Right here. It's almost time. We've learned a lot of vocabulary today. That's a good thing. Okay. What's next? Let me see, let me see, let me see. 
Okay, uh, now that we know the meaning of those and you have them on WhatsApp, we have to do this. It's going to be like a little bit of speaking in the next three minutes that we have. How do these things make you feel? Discuss these situations using the expressions above. People laughing at their own jokes. <laughs> I once, a long time ago, I, I had a student who had this weird habit. It was a lady, I remember, that uh, she liked to tell jokes, but her jokes were not usually funny, or at least I didn't find them funny, but I guess she thought she was very funny because she 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 uh, told a lot of jokes, uh, but normally she couldn't finish her own jokes because she started laughing. She started talking and saying something, and then she's like, <laughs> and then she started laughing uncontrollably, like for 30 seconds. And everybody was like, um, okay. So yeah, people laughing at their own jokes. How does this make you feel? Are you okay with this or is it annoying? Okay, Jose. It makes me feel sorry for them to check. <laughs> makes you feel sorry for them. <laughs> so no, it, it, it doesn't really trigger any of these, you know, uh feelings. Okay. It makes you feel sorry. It it triggers sympathy, okay, from you. All right. <laughs> What about this one? Number two, vending machines that steal your money. Okay, you put a coin in it and you uh, probably just uh, dial, if we can say dialed number, okay, and then the thing starts spinning, but the food gets stuck and you don't get the food you paid for. Okay, how does that make you feel? I guess it has happened to you. It's happened to me. So how does that make you feel? When you go to a vending machine, you put a coin in it, you order the food and then the food never, never falls. <coughs> How does that make you feel? Do you understand the situation? Yeah. Okay. So how, how it, it never happened to me. It's never happened to you. Okay. It, it's happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I actually remember once, and, and it happened last year, I believe, that I was on a vending machine and there was another person in the vending machine right next to it. And the person put a coin inside and that happened to him, right? The food never came out. It got stuck. He was like, come on. Okay, so I said, poor guy, that's some bad luck. So I put my coin in and uh, it was quite the opposite. Instead of getting one, I got two. Okay, so in that moment, I just gave the the guy the other one. I said, like, okay, have this one. <laughs> just because he had just lost his money, right? I said, like, I guess this is fair. Anyway, so it's never happened to you. What about this one? Finding empty ice cube trays in the freezer. This doesn't bother me because it doesn't bother me. But I don't know about you. Okay, maybe you put some water in the ice tray, ice cube trays. And then when you get back home, you find it empty. Okay, somebody took your eyes. So what do you think? How does this make you feel? Uh, Gladys. Well, the thing is, if, if somebody took them mm -hmm. and uh, never refilled Mm -hmm. That cute. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. It can also be a problem because the ice takes some time to, you know, and you know, the water takes some time to solidify into ice, right? So somebody uses them and they just, just refill them, refill them, and then when you get home, you still find some water. Okay, that will be annoying. But yeah. What about yeah. number four? People eating on public transportation. To be honest with you, I don't have much of a problem with that. I used to be one of these people. But um, I guess it depends on their manners, okay? Yeah. If they are not, like, making a mess, I'm okay with it. But I don't know about you. How, how do you feel about this kind of situation? People eating on public transportation. You have no feelings about this. <laughs> okay, then. So I guess... So I do that. I'm sorry? I do that. You do that. Yeah. I, I, I oh. used to do that. I mean, when I was working in, I remember once there was a time I was working in San Salvador and then I had only one hour and a half 
to get from San Salvador near University of El Salvador to Antiguo Cuscatlán, it was on Saturday at noon. You know, Saturday noon traffic is just horrible. So what oh, I did yeah. is that I, I ran to a, a, a cafeteria and uh, I just grabbed a burrito because they sold Mexican food on Saturdays. So I told them, okay, just give me a burrito. So I just grabbed the burrito and then on the bus, I was eating the burrito. So yeah, I used to do this. I mean, I understand sometimes people don't have time to eat, but it doesn't really annoy me. Okay. And the last one, airlines not serving food on long flights. I don't know about this. I've never flown before. Okay. I don't know if you have flown before and you have had this experience. This sounds like not very common thing. So airlines not serving food on long flights. How does that make, make you feel if you have ever had this experience? I don't know. I've never had it. No, not really. Okay. Well, all right. Um, we're going to stop here. It's nine and three. Uh, before that, just let me call attendance one more time. Let's see. Abdi. Aviso Peña is here, I believe. Yeah, Alejandro is also here. Ana Filomena is here. Ana Yanira is, or was here. No, is here. Okay, Yanira Mendoza. Andrea Michel is also here. Byron is here. Boris is here. Cecilia Elizabeth Guardado is here. Cesar Alexander is here. De Claudia Janet. Claudia Janet. No. Debbie Natalia is here. Okay. Yes, I'm here. Hello, Debbie. Uh, Daisy Carolina is here. Also, Gabriela Laura Sequeira. Yes, Gabriela Stephanie Cortez. Yes. I'm Gladys, here. Thank you. Uh, Gladys Imelda Sanchez is here. Uh, Jenny Elizabeth is also here. Jose Raibin is here. Carla Stephanie. Is Carla Stephanie online? No, Carla Stephanie Perla Umanso. Luis Fernando Enrique Herrera is here. Madeline Diana is also here. Maritza Isabel is also here. Melanie Andrea. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, she's here. Noemi is also here. Reina Isabel is here. Rosa Esmeralda is also here. Rufino Amilcar is here. And Sandra Cecilia Munguia is also online. Okay, everybody. Thank you very much. Uh, please study the vocabulary from this class, and I will see you tomorrow. Good night. Good night, teacher. Bye, teacher. Thank you, guys. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye.